Welcome to our lecture on implementation evaluation paper and as you can see I'm in unit 4 lesson 2. The first thing I'm going to pull up is this document called the scoring rubric. So here is the scoring rubric and I just want to go over with you how it's graded. This paper that you're writing next is not hard to write but it's very time consuming. So keep that in mind. It's You've already done part of it, and you're just going to be tweaking what you have and adding to it. So the first thing that has to happen is there needs to be a one to three paragraph summary of the issue and a one to three paragraph summary of your program. And in that, you're going to be actually, as you do that, you're introducing your paper. The summary of the issue most of you have done very well on. The summary of the program, about half of you have it down to a very good summary of your program. When I read your summary, I should be able to tell what your program is going to do. But it is a summary, it's not specific. And so the reason it's not specific is because of this planning chart that you have. And the planning chart that you have, you've already done in your theory and rationale paper. You're going to take your chart from the theory and rationale paper and you're going to work to improve it and add to it. So these are the things that have to happen. You have to have the correct chart showing the goals, the grant goals, your goals, the objectives, strategies are optional, that's the middle column, and evaluations. The next thing is that I'm going to look to see if everything aligns and the last thing is that everything matches the grant. So the first couple paragraphs are worth six points and then this is worth 18 points and so I'm looking is the chart used correctly is everything aligned with the grant are all objectives smart and are all assessments aligned with objectives and these are the maximum points you can get so if you don't do everything perfectly then you'll get part of the points the next thing here is something you haven't done yet let me go back and talk about these strategies. These strategies, this is the center column of the chart. And in the center column of the chart, you're to put strategies. And strategies explain what you have to do to make the objective happen. So that when you do the evaluation, you get good results. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I just want to point out it's optional. In the grant, it's required, so it's in your best interest to try to fill out at least one chart full of strategies so you can get feedback on whether they're specific or not, if your answers are specific enough. So let's look at the work plan. This is the work plan. And in reality, I think most of your grants require you to submit a work plan that looks like this. So the issue with the work plan is, that it's designed to help you once you get the grant. It also helps the grant readers see that you know what you're doing and is sequential. So this plan is divided into planning, implementing, and evaluation. That's not necessary. For me, it helps me organize my thoughts to do it this way. What I'm looking for is that you have a full three years of planning on this sheet and that you've identified all the key items from your strategies that you're going to have to do. So this sheet actually forces you to start to think of strategies. And they may not be as specific as in your grant chart, but it does give you something. So the reason this third column over here, this column, is empty is because if you get a grant, what happens is you use the third column to keep track to see if you're doing it correctly. So to point out to you, this is not a perfect chart. It's a chart to show you what to do. And one of the problems with this chart is it's not three years long. All of your grants have to be three years long. So you have to keep that in mind. This is not specific enough and it's not long enough. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. So I don't care what year or month or date you start, but you have to have three full years. You don't need specific information right now, but eventually you will have to have some more specific information. You can, 
as I did here. I said, I'm doing this. But then I also said that there were some other people helping me. And once I hire people, as you can see, the health educator or the or other people will be doing this. So right here, there's this term called the advisory board. An advisory board is set up to advise you. Advisory board people do not work for you. You will have a meeting once a quarter probably, and you'll share your ideas with them. And because they're experts in the field, they'll tell you which ideas they like and which ones they don't. Sorry about that. So next we have, so you see how that goes. The next thing that you're required to have in your work plan or your paper is this thing in Excel timesheet, Excel timeline, excuse me. So the Excel timeline looks something like this. And the purpose of using it is that it helps, it takes your work plan, that's a Word document, and it puts it into a different format so it's easy to read. I want you to divide your, your uh, work plan, this sheet, I want you to divide it into year one, year two, and year three. And whatever is in here should match what's on your work plan. Again, this is not perfect. It's not in a paper. It's below average for lots of reasons. But I want you to show you how to set it up. Sometimes people ask how to get these colors into the chart. I have a PC, I don't have a Mac, but my understanding is that the Macs are very similar to this. So I'm at the home page, I go to the cell that I want colored, I go to the paint can, and I tell the paint can what color to color the cell. If I want to color two cells, I tell it to color two cells. It's that simple. Um, you guys can pick any color you want, it doesn't matter to me. But you're going to list in year one what you're going to do, and then you color in all the highlights. And then I'm going to be looking to see, does this match your yearly work plan? Okay. So that's that piece. Now, this is something you have not done yet. And this says one to two pages of evaluation strategy. And that is maximum two pages. What I want you to do is I want you to take your planning chart, which I don't have open. The planning chart is the objective strategies and evaluation chart. And I want you to take the third column, the evaluations, and I want you to put it into narrative. You need to explain it in narrative. It not, must be very clear that you're speaking about your program the evaluation of your program and that you're using correct terminology. So one of the key issues right here is it has to be specific about your program. And that's happened for a variety of reasons, but oftentimes when people really don't know what they need, what they're talking about, they're very vague. When I read your evaluation summary, which is a summary of that third column, then I should be very, it should be very easy for me to see that you know what you're doing. When you don't know what you're doing, you just start to talk about terms very generally, and you will lose a lot of points if you do that. So if it's vague, if what you write is so vague that it could relate to any grant out there, then you're going to get a zero to one point on it. So I'm going to show you something in a little bit to show you what I mean by how specific it is. My recommendation for you is that you write this evaluation excuse me for all the typos, using your goals. So it would be best if you said goal one and you explain the evaluations that are in the third column for goal one. Then you give goal two and you explain the evaluations for goal two, goal three, etc. If you do it by goal, you're much more likely to be specific enough that it's about your grant and you get more points. And then again, we have the spelling, grammar, APA, and style. My guess is that you will not have any APA for this paper, um, so you would automatically get three points there. It's very, very rare that anybody has a reference list for this paper. So let's look at what a good IE paper will do. 
So a good IE paper will have one to three paragraphs about the issue and population, one to three paragraphs summarizing the program. And when you do this, you're actually introducing your paper. You will then have your planning chart with the grant goals, your goals, the first column objectives, and the third column evaluation. These must be completed. Okay, last time evaluation was optional. Activities are optional, but I highly recommend you get at least one goal with activities so you can see if you're specific enough. You will receive feedback on any activities or strategies you put in the center column. The evaluation narrative specifically and clearly summarizes the third column of the planning chart. Then you have the work plan that matches the chart. It's three years long, all major events and activities, and then the Excel timeline. You're going to, you're going to submit at least two different documents. You're going to submit the paper with the charts. Some people submit their work plan separately. But this Excel timesheet has to be submitted as a separate document. And that's because it's very difficult to take an Excel document and put it into Word without messing up the whole document. So you're going to have that Excel timeline. When you submit this to Blackboard, you're going to get a notice that some of your documents were not read by SafeAssign. And that is because SafeAssign cannot read Excel. So it will, it'll do a check on your Word documents, but it will not do a check on the Excel. So if you see that come up, I don't want you to worry about it. And so here are the possible headings. You might introduce it, an introduction to the issue and a summary of the program, planning chart, evaluation narrative, and then summary of the problem program. The work plan and timeline come at the end or they come as separate documents because they're like attachments in a report. Okay, so I do not have the sample paper up here. I will find it when I uh, get offline and I will post it so that you can see what a good paper might look like. Let me see. I don't think it's here, but let me look. Okay, so that is the implementation and evaluation paper. That's what it looks like. That's the end of this lecture. And we're going to um, wrap up this lecture now. I will take questions. I will also post an announcement when I'm going to be online again to answer questions in the Collaborate room. And after you finish watching this lecture, you should move on to the lecture on budgets. Thank you very much and thanks for being flexible today without any energy at the school.